In this and the upcoming lectures, we will study reinforcement learning. Let's begin with the basic concepts of reinforcement learning. The concepts are boring, but you have to remember all of them. The aim of this lecture is to help you understand the basic concepts. We are going to use a little bit of probability theory. I suppose you have learned them. Here I just want to refresh your memory. The first concept is random variable. It is unknown, and its value depends on the outcome of a random event. For example, I toss a coin. It is a random event, and its outcome can be either head or tail. Denote the head by 0 and tail by 1. Let x be the random variable whose value depends on the outcome of coin flip. The value of x can be either 0 or 1. Before I toss a coin, I don't know what the outcome will be. But I can describe the event using probabilities. With probability 0.5, x is equal to 0, which means the outcome is head. With probability 0.5, x is equal to 1, which means the outcome is tail. People typically use uppercase letters for random variables and lowercase for observed values. What is the difference between a random variable and its observed value? The random variable big X denotes the unknown outcome. It has randomness. After I actually toss a coin, I observe either head or tail. At this time, variable X has an observed value. Denote the observed value by a lowercase letter. The observed value does not have randomness. It's just a number. For example, I flipped a coin four times and observed four values. x1 equal to 1, x2 equal to 1, x3 equal to 0, and x4 equal to 1. The four lowercase letters are observed values. Don't confuse random variables with observed values. The next concept, probability density function, or PDF. PDF provides a relative likelihood that the value of the random variable would equal to that sample. The definition is not intuitive. I want to show an example of PDF. Gaussian distribution, also known as the normal distribution, is a continuous distribution. The variable x can be any real number. P of x is the probability density function. It is determined by the mean mu and standard deviation sigma. P of x is the probability density around a given value, small x. The graph of Gaussian distribution has a bell shape. The x-axis denotes the variable x, and the y-axis denotes the probability density. Around the mean mu, the probability density is high. Away from the mean, the probability density is low. If you draw a random sample from Gaussian distribution, it is very likely in the neighborhood of the mean. It is unlikely far from the mean. In some applications, the random variables are discrete. This is known as discrete probability distribution. In the example of tossing a coin, the variable can only choose values from a discrete set. The values can be either 0 or 1. For discrete variables, we use probability mass function, or PMF, to describe the probability distribution. PMF is a function that gives the probability that a discrete random variable is exactly equal to some value. Here is an example of discrete distribution. The discrete random variable can only choose value from the discrete set. The values can be 1, 3, and 7. P is the probability mass function. It describes the probability that the random variable is equal to 1, 3, or 7. Look at the figure. With probability 0.2, x takes value 1. With probability 0.5, x takes value 3. With probability 0.3, x takes value 7. Elsewhere, the probability mass is 0. Let's study a property of PDF and PMF. 
denote the domain of random variable by the set big X. For continuous distribution, we can calculate the integral of the PDF PX on the set big X. The integral is equal to 1. For discrete distributions, we can take the sum of P of X for all X in the domain. The sum is equal to 1. The next concept, expectation. f of x can be any function. The expectation of f of x is denoted by e of f of x. For continuous distributions, the expectation is equal to the integral of p of x times f of x on the set big X. For discrete distributions, the expectation is equal to the sum of p of x times f of x. Random sampling. Here's an example. There are 10 balls in the bin. 2 are red, 5 are green, and 3 are blue. I close my eyes, I shake the bin, put my hand into the bin, and get a ball out of the bin. What is the color of the ball? I don't know until I open my eyes. But I know the ball can be red, green, or blue. I also know the probabilities of the three colors. Before I open my eyes, the color is a random variable. When I open my eyes, the randomness disappears and I observe the color. This is one trial of random sampling. I ask the question in another way. There are many balls in the bin. I don't know the number. But I know 20% are red, 50% are green, and 30% are blue. I randomly get a ball from the bin. What's the color of the ball? The question is actually the same as before. If I do the random sampling only once, then the outcome can be any of the three colors. However, if I repeat the sampling a hundred times, then the outcome will have statistical significance. Around 20 balls are red, around 50 are green, and around 30 are blue. Let's implement the random sampling using Python. The color can be red, green, and blue. They are sampled with probabilities of 0 0.2, 0 0.5, and 0 0.3, respectively. I want to draw 100 samples. The choice function returns me 100 samples. Here I print the outcome of random sampling. All of the three colors can be chosen. If I execute the function again, the outcome will be completely different. In this and the upcoming lectures, random sampling is frequently used. You can recall this example when trying to understand random sampling.